So being an entrepreneur has its ups and its downs, especially when it comes to firing toxic clients. If you're in the situation and you wanna know how to get rid of toxic clients and stick around, because in this video, I'm gonna teach you ways in which you can basically fire your clients. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, Jennifer Morella. This YouTube channel is for coaches, service providers, and creatives who are looking to grow their online business using social media. That's right up your alley. Go ahead and that subscribe button. And if you're excited to learn how to fire a toxic client, then go ahead and give me a thumbs up because I'm gonna teach you how to do that respectfully inside this video. Let's do this. So there are four steps to firing a client. The first thing I want you to consider is the timeline, okay? When I'm considering the timeline, I want you to think about the relationship in which you signed the contract. So for example, if you just signed a contract and you're already seeing the red flags, which don't worry, we'll get to later, then it probably makes it a lot easier for you to let go of that client and it could be like a mutual agreement and it could say you could say something like unfortunately or you know let's say let's say we're gonna give our fired client jane okay so we're gonna say hey jane um you know i've enjoyed our time together however i feel like there is a miscommunication in which the this relationship is supposed to work and I'm not really feeling like it's aligned or we are aligned together. And I think that we should no longer continue to work together and that's it. If you've been working with this toxic client for a very long time, then it's going to make it a lot harder for you to be able to end the relationship, which we're gonna dive into in just a little bit. But when I'm talking about timeline, I'm really considering that and what that's gonna look like for you. So the second step you wanna consider when you are firing a client is the red flags. So the red flags, now, this client can exhibit this all the time. What, in order for you to see these red flags, I want you to recognize that this has to be consistent, right? Like if your client is amazing and they have like one of these red flags, don't make it a point to be like, oh my God, I need to let them go because John said this, like, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying if this is something that happens a lot with your clients and they do one of many or a few of these things over and over and over. So the first thing is the client doesn't respect your time. Meaning if inside your contract, and this is why contracts are super important and you should have them when you're having one-on-one -on -one clients or just clients in general, is if inside your contract it says that you are available for calls or discussions between you know 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and your client is messaging you at eight o'clock at night and expects you to answer, that is someone who is not respecting your time and that is a huge red flag. Another red flag is when a client doesn't respect your scope of work. So what I mean for that is let's say you are a social media manager and the scope of work that your client that cl your client is paying you for is only to post three posts a week with captions and to schedule them in and that's it. But they're also asking you to post four posts a week and also add stories and edit their captions and also edit their reels or something like that. That's outside of your contract. At that point, you you have the full autonomy to be able to ask your client to raise your rate in which you guys had negotiated on because they're outside of your scope of work. And I know a lot of people struggle with the language around this. So something that you could simply say is you can email the client and say, hey, I would love to do that for you. But unfortunately that's outside of scope of work. So if you'd like me to add this on for this month, this is how much, and you could say X, this would be an additional cost for me to be able to complete those tasks for you. Easy peasy. So the third red flag you wanna watch out for is the client has these massive expectations of you that you cannot deliver. And what I mean by that, and this comes back to the contract and the communication based on the call, like your first discovery call that you have about her expectations or his expectations towards you. So what I mean is, let's say you're hiring your coach and somebody is hiring you for social media content, but their expectations is you're actually going to do the work for them. And that isn't one scope of work and two, that isn't one part of the scope of work and two, just isn't something you actually do, right? So that is a huge red flag, making sure that your client knows exactly what you do for them. And if they don't respect that, then again, that's probably does back to our last red flag. The next red flag you want to watch out for is your client is basically underpaying you and not really valuing what you have to offer. And so a lot of the times I remember when I was a social media manager, I would offer a package to a new client and they would say, oh, I'm, I, this is exactly what I mean. This is exactly what I need, but I'm looking for something cheaper. And so the objection to that is you pay for kind of what you get, right? I'm offering you this package and with this, get you get X, Y, and Z and you're paying for what you get. Not only do you get the quantity, but you also get the quality of the work and the experience that you have and so this is where I'm gonna ask you to hone in on your talents and really respect your power as a CEO as a business owner and just as someone who knows their 
right? Excuse my French. <laughs> and so like if someone knows their stuff that like you deserve to be paid what you are asking your client to pay for. And I think that is a huge red flag that when your client is trying to nickel and dime you for your services, it's one thing for your client to say, Hey, I don't want you to work hourly. I just want to have a set retainer based on what you can complete for me. And then you can give her an estimate versus someone who's like, Hey, I only want you to do 30 minutes on this and you went over. So I'm not going to pay you for that. Right? That is a huge red flag. So this third step is definitely the hardest and it's making a plan to fire your client. And so the first step you want to do is look at the contract, the contract that you have in place with your client. Where does it say that he or she or you can end the contract? Is it 30 days notice? Is it two weeks notice? And how does it have to be written? Does it have to be via phone call? Like what does it say? Typically it's usually written. So I would check that first and it's usually around 15 to 30 days. Those are typically the contracts like average numbers, right? And so I would make sure that you've read that first and then create that plan of action. I personally would, and I not only do this for clients, but for employees, like contractors that I work with, really just letting them go. I check the contract and make sure that it's within the 30 day or the 15 day mark. And I usually send them an email, like letting them know, hey, this is confirmation of my 30 day notice that I will no longer be needing your services. Um, and then by X, Y, and Z, the date, 30 days or 15 days after whatever, um, we will be ending our contract. Now you want to make sure that the scope of work is completed. So for example, if you promise them in 30 days, X, Y, and Z, you want to make sure that that's actually done. I'm not a fan of burning bridges. I like to leave people in a great place. I want to make sure the relationship is ended amicably and there is no like hostility or anything like that. So making sure that you're ending things in the right place is always just really good karma. Okay. And then the fourth step is actually firing the client. And my biggest recommendation, as I said, is that you want to do this via email. So they have it written. And then you also want to make sure that in the email, you're happy to have a conversation in person about the feedback, about why this is happening, that kind of stuff. And then you just want to practice. I recommend practicing with a friend or a coach or a partner who understands the situation and can actually give you some honest feedback. You want to make sure that when you're communicating why you're letting go of this contractor and or client, that you're explaining why this is happening and you're just being totally transparent, professional, and nice. You want to keep it simple. You don't want to give them, you know, oh, because you did this on this day and because you did that on that day, like that ultimately really doesn't matter. What matters is that you're ending the contract and you're ending the contract amicably and you're making sure that they understand that you can no longer serve their needs. If you like this video and you got a lot of value of it, I hope you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I drop these videos once or twice a week, every week, and leave a comment below and let me know if this was helpful. Until next time, my friends, I love you guys and have a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye.